All right, here we are yet again. Chomp, chomp. All right, so we're going to use a Grammar Bytes presentation today to talk a little bit about fragments, comma splices, and few sentences. So you want to uh, remember to take notes on this video, especially the differences between a fragment, comma, splice, and few sentence. And uh, I'll tell you when to pause the video in order to do that. All right, so let's talk a little bit. Of, okay, so in this presentation, you will learn to recognize complete sentences, employ appropriate punctuation, and use subordination and coordination. We'll talk about subordination and coordination in a little bit. So this is something um, that you might see on an objective test dealing with fragments. At the pizzeria, Jolene eavesdropped on the argument at the table. Next table, hot cheese cascaded over her slice of pizza onto her bare lap. So is there something wrong with that sentence? Do we need a comma? Do we need a semicolon? Do we need a period or is no change necessary? So take a minute to look at that sentence and see if you can figure that out. So you may want to pause the video and go over that. All right. So did you put A, B, or C, or D? If you put B, the comma between table and hot makes a comma splice, an error that option B fixes. All right, so moving on. So as you know, a sentence must have a subject, verb, and complete thought. Andre practiced jump shots to impress Coach Nelson. Andre the subject. Practice is a verb, so therefore you have a complete sentence. So a fragment is when one of those two things are missing. Andre spinning the ball to show off his skills. So because um, spinning doesn't equal a verb here, you have a fragment. You need a, something in front of spinning or past tense. Um, and spun the ball to show off his skills. So in here you have no subject. As Andre spun the ball to show off his skills. Another th fragment. That's not a complete sentence. So you get the idea. And then finally Andre spun the ball to show off his skills. Now you have a subject and a verb which is a complete thought. Which is a fragment. Now this is um, something you want to write down. A few sentence and a comma splice. So here's an example. Andre sank a perfect basket from half court. Unfortunately, the coach's back was turned. So in this case, this is what's called a few sentences. It's basically the same thing as a run-on sentence. A few sentences when you have two um, sentences fused together to make one sentence but there isn't any punctuation. So here you have a comma after court. And in this case, this what creates a comma splice. And this is pretty typical. And it says here, you cannot join two sentences with a comma. So to fix the error with the period and a capital letter. So essentially it's telling you that you need to, instead of uh, using a comma splice in the sentence with a period and then capitalize the next part of the sentence. Now this one deals with uh, fixing the error with a comma and a coordinating conjunction. Let's look at the example. Andre sang a perfect basketball, perfect basket from half court. Unfortunately, the coach's back was turned. So instead, you can put but, which is a coordinating conjunction. Okay, now there is an acronym for coordinating conjunction. It's called fanboys. For and 
nor, but, or, yet, so. So it's telling you that you can fix an error with a comma and a coordinating conjunction. So here the coordinating conjunction is but, one of the fanboys. Okay, or you can fix the error with a semicolon. This is something that a lot of students don't realize they can do. So Andre saying a perfect basket from half court, semicolon, unfortunately the coach's back was turned. So notice it says use a semicolon sparingly three to four times per essay max. You don't want to overdo it with semicolons, but it can be used. Or you can fix the error with a subordinate conjunction. Andre sank a perfect basket from half court. Unfortunately, the coach's back was turned. Andre sank a back perfect basket from half court after the coach's back was turned. So it basically says reduce one of the two clauses to an incomplete thought. So let's see. These are the subordinate conjunctions. Subordinate conjunctions. So you can use any of these to fix a sentence that is fused. So you insert a subordinate conjunction. All right, so these are general punctuation rules when subordinating one of the clauses in the error. Subordinate pl clause plus the main clause. Well, in this case, subordinate clause plus a comma, plus the main clause. Main clause plus a subordinate clause. All right, here's a sample. Although Andre sank a perfect basket from half court, the coach's back was turned. Dropping the comma after court is like a championship game turnover. So you want to make sure you have your comma here. Andre sank a perfect basket from half court after the coach's back was turned. Adding an unnecessary comma is like Grant standing when a team is open. So you don't need that. Um, so, so many of us overdo with commas. If you have a subordinate um, conjunction, um, then you can use that instead of having a comma. Okay, one. Not join two sentences with a comma. This is a common mistake that many people make. They think if I just put a comma and then put a conjunction here or another word, that rectifies the problem. No, that is called a comma splice. Okay, and you're basically fusing sentences. All right, um, another point that I want to go back to is that there are multiple ways you can fix this as we went over before. You can always put a period and add a capital letter. We talked about that. The other fix is with a coordinating conjunction, which is going back to fanboys. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. So if you use a coordinating conjunction and you put a comma before the coordinating conjunction, that fixes the comma splice. All right. And then we talked about the semicolon using that. And we talked about the subordinate conjunction. So by, it, by using a subordinate conjunction, um, it reduces one of the two clauses to an incomplete thought, which is why we can use a subordinate conjunction here. And then we went over a list of subordinate conjunctions. Okay. So again, as I said earlier, you will take um, some practice exercises. Make sure you took notes on the difference between a subordinate conjunction, the um, fanboys, the few sentences, and comma splices, and be prepared to explain what those are in your notes.